we're going to take a look at um, the saturated gas phase uh, black oil PVT graphically just so you get a feeling for what they look like. Um, now to create the, the saturated gas phase we're going to talk about creating the saturated gases and creating the saturated oils um, here just in a few minutes but um, if, if we just look at the two main images you should probably try to remember is um, the little rs and the units here again would be something like standard cubic meters per standard cubic meter or standard cubic meters per million standard cubic meter or stock tank barrels per million standard cubic feet. These are the the normal units. Uh, sometimes stock tank barrel per thousand standard cubic feet is used. So these are the types of units but basically this is our, our little rs and if this is our let's say our initial dew point for the problem we had was maybe 300 bar or something so it's going to start up here at a maximum value and then as you lower the pressure uh, you get retrograde condensation okay so here we're talking about that that first gas um, lowering the pressure and this um, if we start at the initial dew point here we have only gas and then we go to a lower pressure using you know maybe a constant composition expansion Let's say this is our first pressure our second pressure and now we've got some liquid here oil and a new gas G2 this is the second gas here so what happens is that when you when you go below the dew point you get retrograde condensation and some of the heavier components form this liquid so the remaining gas if you take just that gas to the surface it's going to produce less surface oil okay and and then you just keep this same process going this could be something like for example a constant composition expansion it might be constant volume depletion type depletion test where all of this is being conducted at some constant temperature we just change the pressure and we get more oil three gas three and so forth and this is just going to keep dropping down like that the gas is going to keep becoming what we call it leaner leaner lean means yielding less surface oil 37 we just corrected the price 37 dollar per barrel oil so there's less in solution until you get down to some kind of minimum around here and then if you go to really low pressures less than probably 100 bar you know maybe I, I'm sorry uh, something like 20 bar probably less than 20 30 bar uh, you'll this this may come up again and then if you go to really low pressures it might jump way way up here at low really low pressures but the main part of the curve that's important <coughs> is this starting at the initial fluid and then it's decreasing kind of say yield so so this is the main curve you want to now if we take that original gas here at 300 bar to a higher pressure right then nothing changes with the we talked about this 
you know, if you, if you separate that gas, you'll always get the same ratio. We talked about that last hour. Now, the BG is the other property that, any, any questions about this? Okay, so this is what's going on here is basically retrograde condensation is causing the, the gas phase to become leaner. Okay, so that's what's happening. We're losing components forming this liquid phase and the gas accordingly um, can contain less heavier components in solution. Now, if we plot the BG, BG is proportional to 1 over pressure, right? BG is proportional with 1 over pressure. There's also the Z factor in there, but uh, the main pressure dependent variable is 1 over P. So this is going to look like, you know, like this. And the numbers are going to start at, you know, 0, 0.0. 0, 2, and they're going to go up to maybe 1. or, But it's, it's not a good way. It changes several orders of magnitude here. So instead of plotting it this way, what we're going to do is that we're going to plot 1 over BG, which would be proportional with pressure, right? And what we call 1 over BG is little BG, okay? And that has units of standard cubic meter per reservoir cubic meter. And we're going to put the D in there to be consistent. So this is going to be a plot starting at 0, 0. It's going to be kind of linear. And then it's going to bend off over like this a little bit. This might be 100, 200, 300. That order of magnitude. And it basically is giving the factor if you take one cubic meter of reservoir gas at some pressure here, let's say this is our 300 bar, then you're going to transform that gas, that one cubic meter of reservoir gas, into about 225 standard cubic meters of processed gas. Okay? if we start with one cubic meter of reservoir gas, okay? Initially at the dew point, for example. So, so this is, it's an easy number to remember. I mean, it's, it's like how much does the gas expand? And for all of the reservoirs you're ever going to work with, that number initially will be like, for a low pressure reservoir, it might be 100 ish, and for a high pressure reservoir, it'll be 300 ish. Okay, so it's, it's going to be a number you can get used to. And, and, and so if you get 225, you realize you get this expansion, the gas expands a factor of 225. Now, 
what's actually happening here because this is our saturated this is our saturated properties is that as you're going down here we've got two things changing the pressure is decreasing which gives basically this effect okay but the second thing is that the gas composition that is the little rs is changing also so the composition of the gas is changing and the pressure of the gas is changing and that's going to affect this okay so let's just look at the equation for b g d that's this um, we just turn this upside down we start with our conventional um, Okay. And now we've got this NGG term over NG. Okay. Well, ZG is a function of pressure, temperature, and composition, right? That's changing, and that's changing. NGG over NG is basically a function of the oil-gas ratio. Okay? It's mainly a function of little rs, which itself is a function the pressure, right? So that's changing. So you've got this term changing. Um, this term's changing. And of course, pressure's changing only because of pressure, but the Z factor's changing both because of pressure and composition. And the Y basically is a function of this little rs. It's the same thing. But you end up getting something that looks a little bit like this. In fact, sometimes it doesn't, it's not completely smooth if this little, r, little rs curve drops very quickly. It might actually kind of be, it might have kind of a funky shape. It might not look so smooth as, as I show here. Okay. And then the gas viscosity will be a function of both composition and this is the saturated gas viscosity. Um, so this might start down here at 0.02. It might be reaching 0.03-ish in centipoise. Centipoise is the same as millipascal second if you're into SI units. They're the same thing. And again, this is changing because of both pressure and composition change. however you want to look at it, okay? Now, if you took this gas way down here, you know, this gas here, which is got the lowest little rs. So this is, we would call this our leanest gas. Uh, 
if you just took that, let's say that was here, and we took that to higher pressures, okay? So we, we keep the composition like we, well, like we talked about last hour. If we just took this gas here, threw away the oil that was together with it, and we took that to undersaturated pressures, then its viscosity would look something like this. Okay, so this is the <coughs> undersaturated viscosity of this RS minimum. Okay. And likewise, if you took a, a richer gas and you went to pressures above its dew point, then it would have something that might look like that. So these are the undersaturated. So these are the saturated. Uh, gas viscosity is a function of pressure and composition, whereas the undersaturated mu g is only a function of pressure because this is constant, is held constant. And here we're talking about pressures greater than and equal to the dew point of that gas. So that's the dashed line and this is the solid line. So again, you're going to have the undersaturated table is going to be a subset of tables for each particular saturated gas. It's going to have a set of undersaturated values. Okay? Just like the oil. If you take this saturated here, it's going to have a subset of undersaturated properties here. pressures above the dew point. And this BG is going to be the same way. If we take this gas down here, I'm not quite sure what it's going to look like. Um, I should be able to figure it out, but um, I think it's going to be on the upper side of it. It's going to be pretty close to it, but it's not going to be very different, but it, it, I think it'll be probably on the higher side. So that's the undersaturated for this particular gas. So, just to summarize, to create the saturated tables, we need to have, at each pressure, we need to have an oil so that the gas is saturated. In the first case, we've got just a little, this is a little drop of oil. And then as you go, if you deplete this original gas, G1, to lower pressures, then you'll, you'll get more and more liquid as you get retrograde condensation and so forth. And then you'll take each of those gases by itself as we did up here throw away the oil and make the measurements or calculations so for a given basically a given pressure here you'll have 
um, uh, saturated and saturated table and then the undersaturated table. So, okay. now let's go back to the question I think that uh, uh, we had earlier about, actually I've, I've talked a little bit about it here, is how do we create these gases? Okay, we talked about that. And the saturated oils. So the process is that we, we, we start with a sample, composition, ZI, and I'm going to call it black oil. It's, it's a special composition I want to use to create my black oil table. Okay? So we have to start with that. Okay. We fix our temperature. And then we um, deplete that means lower the pressure in stages that gives two phases gas oil equilibrium So that would start for example temperature is given start at the saturation pressure that's the saturation pressure of this composition BOI so there's going to be the phase itself and there's going to be an incipient phase right now, if it's a bubble point, the incipient phase is a bubble, a gas bubble. Okay. If it's a if it's a gas uh, phase, if it's a dew point, then the incipient phase would be an oil. The point is that we have an oil and a gas. Okay. This is its pressure one.
Then we put that through the process, right? Multi-stage process. And that leads us to our surface volume ratio and properties of the gas. So it would be give us a little RS. It would give us BG dry at pressures greater than or equal to the dew point of that gas and likewise for the gas viscosity. It's like we talked about last hour. We've separated the gas from the oil. The oil we take and process it through the same process to give us the solution gas oil ratio. The BO at pressures greater than and equal to the bubble point of that oil and viscosity as well. So we get the saturated table and all the undersaturated points. This gives us all the black oil PVT, saturated, where P and undersaturated. So we create the saturated, one point in the saturated table. That's one point. This is, for example, at the first stage. And this is the first saturation pressure. And then this is kind of step one. And then we deplete this some way or another, what we started with, down to a new pressure. That can be from a constant composition expansion, constant volume depletion expansion, or maybe a differential liberation expansion. All of those three methods would give us two phases at a lower pressure. We're now at pressure two. And we've got I don't know, some amount of oil and some amount of gas. Exactly how much, I don't know. It could be, I don't know, it could be 50-50. We've got some oil and some gas. The amount doesn't really matter because all we take out of this is the composition of the gas at that second pressure and the composition of the oil at the second pressure. That gas composition is processed to give us, again, little rs2, and then we get the BGs dry and the gas viscosities at pressures greater than or equal to this P2. The oil is processed separately and that gives us solution gas oil ratio at the second pressure and BO values and viscosity of oil values at pressures greater than or equal to P2. Also, you measure the surface uh, density as well. Yeah, so we'll put a footnote here.
we get four surface densities. We get two surface densities of gas and two surface oil densities, one from the gas and one from the oil. So we get four surface densities here. Again, we, we get the same thing, except Because each time you do the surface process, you do get new surface product densities. So again, we get saturated BO, PVT, at P saturation 2, and we get undersaturated black oil PVT for pressures greater than and equal to this second saturation pressure. Basically greater than because we already have the equal to. And then we just keep repeating this okay. until you get to whatever low pressure you want to get to. One atmosphere, whatever you want to go to. Um, the, the, it needs to be the lowest pressure you expect your system to be in at that temperature. So, we can just say close to one atmosphere, okay? Or it might be five atmospheres, or it might be whatever. Well, if, if the pipe temperature is reservoir temperature, you can use the same table. But the pipe, pipe temperature is not going to be reservoir temperature. Maybe at the very bottom. So I'm seeing the black oil, BBT, like it's a similar way to you generate the You generate the exact same, yeah, that's right. You just, this, this could be at reservoir temperature, could be, you know, whatever temperatures you need. Blackwell tables. But you have to repeat the whole process. Now, regarding the um, the phase densities. So this is kind of important because we don't really have a table of phase densities. We have to use this this equation Okay, so that's the equation for getting gas density. And for oil density, it's a very similar equation. Like that. All of your black oil models in the reservoir and the tubing and everything, all of them being used, 
they're going to assume a single <coughs> surface oil density and a single surface gas density. Even though we actually calculate for each stage of this process um, and each temperature, it would be, let's see, that would even be different. Um, two types of surface oil densities, uh, I mean, but the models force you to pick a single number. Okay. And because physically the surface oil density coming from the reservoir gas can be very different than the surface oil density coming from the reservoir oil. It can be 15, 20, 30 percent different. The reservoir gas or the, 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 the gas density and oil density from these equations are not going to be necessarily great. Okay? So, so this this basically this can lead to inaccuracies in basically this these densities here okay now the inaccuracy can be a half percent it might be five percent Okay. And that's because these two numbers here, we're fixing them at some value, and that value doesn't apply everywhere. Okay? So we're using these constant values that are can be off who knows how much. Consequently, these are going to be off. And nobody knows about this. It's not written in a single book anywhere. Not really any papers either. So, I'm just going to tell you that my recommendation is that you pick the surface oil and surface gas numbers, these two numbers, so that you get the, the best oil and gas densities where it is most important. There's probably a range of pressure and temperature where getting the density of gas and oil, it's more important than in the other ranges of pressure and temperature, okay? So if you've got a pipeline and the majority of the pipeline is at 80 degrees and between 200 and 500 PSI, you want to get your densities of gas and oil accurate in that range of pressure and temperature. If you're in the reservoir, you want to use you want to get the accurate temper the accurate densities at reservoir temperature, maybe in the range of 300 to 400 bar. Okay. Where it is most important, you will not know. <laughs> As a young first year engineer, you need to go talk to the experienced engineers about where is gravity important. Okay, where is gravity most important in what I'm simulating? Okay, at what pressures and temperatures is it important that I get the densities right? 
So this is really a kind of an experience factor four. If you don't have any older guys, they've all been fired. You know, and all the older women are all presidents or vice presidents. You don't have anybody to ask. You have to do numerical experimentation to see what makes the difference. Okay. So you've got to do and or uh, numerical experimentation. So I, I just flagged you to, to the possibility of it being an issue. And we're talking about probably potential errors in these from a fraction of a percent up to probably as much as 5% if you just don't pay attention. In the worst case, probably 5%, which is more, which could be important. So, all right, so basically we've, I think we've completed most of the discussion on black oil properties. We've got an oil phase, gas phase, saturated, undersaturated. We have the general procedure, how we create the tables. And probably Tuesday next week, I'll give maybe a one hour summary, show you some figures, and then we'll move out of PBT. Any, any questions before we leave?